Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's video which is going to be me telling you about my year abroad plans and what I've got sorted so far and what I'm hoping to get sorted very soon. So let's get into it. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I'm doing or any questions about why I'm doing things do ask me in the comment section below and subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> So let me give you a brief overview of what my plans are. So I'm currently on holiday and I'll be getting back to the UK on the 6th of August and then in the sort of 12 months that I have, 12, 13 months that I have before term starts again in October for my fourth year, I have to go to some countries. Now I have to spend a minimum, I think, of 24 weeks in one country of the language that I speak. So. If I wanted to, I could literally spend um, sort of six months in France and be done with my year abroad. Uh, now, that would give me a lot of time to do revision at home and prepare for fourth year and exams, um, but it would not be very helpful for my language skills. So I've decided to do five months in France and five months, hopefully, in Argentina. Um, so I'm doing my five months in France first. So from August the 17th or so until January the 20th or so, um, I will be working in Provence in France in a t little town called Fort Calquier. Um, it sort of just sits on top of a little hill. It's about two hours north of Marseille and um, it's a parish of about 4,000 people. So nice and small, but I'm working in a chocolate manufacturer's place there essentially. Um, there, that's where they're based, and uh, that's also, I believe, where they make the chocolates, which is pretty cool. So I will be working as a customer services and commercial assistant. Um, now, I'm fairly sure that means that I will be answering a lot of phone calls, replying to emails, uh, maybe talking people through the buying process, um, because this is a luxury chocolate manufacturer. They're called Z Chocolat, so they have quite a sort of intimate relationship with their clients. And the main thing that they do is export posh chocolates abroad in refrigerated packages so that people don't end up with melted chocolate. Now, a few details on the job. I am working seven hours a day, five days a week, from nine till 12, two till six. Um, I managed to find this job through the University Year Abroad website, which was very helpful. Um, I'm going to be working alongside another intern, this time from the University of Lancaster, and we're going to be trying to just sort of alleviate strain into the Christmas period, which is when they get very busy. Um, I'm only getting paid approximately four euros an hour. Uh, that is the sort of, that is the intern rate in France for an internship over one month. Um, and... I will be attempting to live off essentially 560 or so euros per month. Um, my rent is going to cost me about 550 euros per month, um, but I should get student finance and Turing funding as well, hopefully, to help things along. You might be wondering how I managed to find an apartment um, and a place to stay. So initially the company was going to help me find somewhere to stay, um, but they were unable to sort of get any viewings for apartments there for the budget that I needed. So I joined the Facebook group for the sort of the village and the parish. And within sort of four hours of posting um, about my requirements, I got 10 people messaging me. Now, eight of those I had to discard because they were either too expensive or too far away from the centre of town, despite me specifically asking for very precise things price wise and um, distance wise um, but this one lady was offering me a room in her house for 500 euros um, which was very lovely and she would let me use her kitchen etc um, and this other lady was offering me her Airbnb um, apartment that we would rent privately through a, uh, a contract and everything um, which was great but was only available from the start of September so I asked the lady who was offering me the room in her house, whether I could do two weeks with her and then uh, the rest of the five months with the other lady. Um, and so far, so good. Um, the old lady in the, in the house is expecting me to move into that room 
um, and I need to make sure that I get a contract signed for the apartment uh, for the rest of the five months. Um, now, it's looking like it might get a bit complicated. Thankfully, I don't need a visa because I'm an Italian citizen, so that's all sorted. Um, but there has been a lot of paperwork so far just to get funding and to make sure that I'm safe and to get travel insurance that the university requires. And I'm just not looking forward to having to put together a French housing contract as well. But fingers crossed it all sorts itself out. I'll be in France with my bike because obviously I'm bringing my bike to do lots of beautiful bike rides in Provence. And I'll be good to go working uh, essentially a nine till five. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, the reasons I didn't go for uh, something like the British Council, for those of you who don't know, it's something set up by a company called British Council, where they send year abroad students to schools in Europe and South America um, to teach English as a foreign language or assist in teaching English as a foreign language. And they pay well and they get everything sorted for you. You still have to find accommodation, of course, but they sort everything out for you. The reason I didn't go for them is because I wanted to do something other than teaching for part of my year abroad. And the British Council in France only offer sort of a nine month period and you have to stay for the whole nine months. In Spain, it's the same. And in Argentina, it is six months. So I could have gone to Argentina with the British Council for six months, but um, it was in the university and I didn't want to teach in a university. Um, so talking about Argentina, I'm currently in contact with one of my tutor's friends who lives in Cordoba and she is contacting schools in the area, asking them whether they would like to hire me. Uh, she thinks I'll probably end up in a private school because it's very hard for the state to um, employ people at the moment. Um, and hopefully it'll be a secondary school because uh, that's sort of the age I like teaching. Um, so more details on that to come. Uh, hopefully I'll get that sorted in time. Um, if not, as I said, I'm an EU citizen, so I should be able to come anywhere in Europe, uh, essentially Spain, to speak Spanish for the second half of my year abroad if I need it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it, um, zooming through that. If you do have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. I'm sure I've missed some eminently important things um, to say. So if I have, do let me know. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna know more about what I'm be doing in my year abroad in the future, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, it's very helpful and you'll get to see what happens next. So thank you very much for watching, stay tuned.